What's up everybody? So the first thing I wanted to say is thanks so much for coming over and watching this video. Thanks for leaving a like maybe. Thanks for even subscribing, especially if you've come over from learning the lines. I know this is vastly different content. It's not boat tours. It's not sailing. It's not DIY. But reef keeping is something that I personally, Jordan, have always loved and it's something that I've always wanted to share in video form. And if you've watched some of our older Learning the Lines videos, I have talked about maybe starting a reef keeping YouTube channel before. So why now? Why am I starting a reef keeping YouTube channel now? Well, like I said before, it's always been somewhat of a plan to do this, but when Randy and I moved aboard Freebie, we got rid of all of our aquariums. Now before we moved aboard Freebie, we had a 150 gallon mixed reef and a 40 gallon mixed reef. We also had a 110 gallon frag system with about two to 300 frags in it. And we were growing coral and selling them. I was also doing aquarium maintenance. So I've got years of experience in this hobby. We've just kind of been out of it for the past couple years because we've been living on the boat and then we were living in a very small apartment. But Randy and I have moved to a slightly larger apartment We've got a little room in our kitchen for a 10 gallon nano reef and we've got a little bit of room in the budget as well for things like a nano reef. So now is as good a time as ever to start a little tank. Certainly we can start something bigger, but even though it's not gonna be cheap, we wanna keep this reef within a budget um, because you know we have our monetary goals. You know We're saving up for another boat, we're also having to pay rent and bills and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we just don't want a reef tank that breaks the bank right now. But if we're gonna do a 10 gallon, we're gonna do it right, okay? That's the way I've always looked at it. Like if, if you're gonna go small, you're gonna go small and awesome. So this tank right here, this is a 10 gallon water box, all in one cube, essentially. So the filter, the filtration systems in the back, it came with, I actually got the, I think it's the plus model. It came with an AI Prime HD, more than enough light for anything you wanna grow in here. But this tank is gonna be a zoanthid only tank. Okay, so we're gonna have some fish in it, but the goal for this tank is to have an awesome aquascape with nothing but zoanthids in it and nothing but high end, high quality, really bright, really beautiful zoanthids. So that's the goal for this tank. You know, I've, I've always wanted to start a zoanthid only tank, but now that I've kind of told you what we're gonna be doing with this tank, zoanthids only, 10 gallon, really high end, the first step to an incredible tank of any size is the aquascape. This is a step that I feel that you should not rush. Now really, nothing in this hobby you should rush. When you rush things, that's when you get problems. But especially do not rush the first step of aquascaping. You want your scape to be an expression of you, essentially. I know it sounds kind of corny, but realistically, your aquascape, it's an artistic expression. It really is. And, you know, don't just take a bunch of rocks and, and pile them in there and make a pile of rocks. You want to get in there and, and get the weird pieces and form it in different ways and make ledges and, and just do, you know, go crazy. Get creative with it. You know, and then glue them all together and, and just, just make it look cool. You want your tank to be beautiful with or without coral, with or without fish in it. You want that aquascape to just be awesome. So that's what we're gonna do. These rocks that I'm using, I've got 15 pounds of what's called real reef rock, okay? It's, it's already purple, okay? And I believe it's, it's paint that they use for it, but these are rocks that are made from aragonite. They're molded from sand, okay? So they're not real, they're called real reef rocks, but they're not, you know, rocks that you, people go out in the environment and take, okay? These are rocks that are man-made. They're formed, I believe, with the aragonite. And then once they're formed, they're grown in an aquarium system. So they get, they get all kinds of, of different life on them. Here you can see there's a bunch of like little you can see there are a bunch of like little tube worms on there, dead ones. There's some dead macroalgae on there. So there's lots of life on here. So, you know, you're not gonna get any hitchhikers because everything's dead. You know, there's gonna be a little bit of phosphate leach. That's probably gonna be the only drawback to like this type of rock that was formed, man-made, grown, cycled, and then dried. But, this is probably, I would say this is probably the most expensive rock you're gonna buy. 
Okay, I think this was six bucks a pound. Okay, one of the most. There might be, there might, don't quote me on that. There might be some more that's, that's a little bit more. But the reason being, I, I wouldn't be using this rock if I was starting a 200 gallon. I'd be using probably a, a, a normal dry rock, or dry live rock, which is, you know, comes white. Um, it doesn't come with all this craziness on it, just because it's cheaper. But this is only a 10 gallon. So it, we only bought 15 pounds of this stuff. 15, 15 pounds at six bucks isn't that much money. But 200 pounds at six bucks a pound, that's a lot, that's a lot more money. That's what I like about nano tanks is you can afford to go with high end stuff, right? We got a high end light, we got a we got high end rocks, we got a high end tank. My budget for this whole system is going to be about a thousand bucks, okay? And I know some people might be like, "Wow, a thousand bucks for a ten gallon tank? That's way too much." You can go to Petco and start one for like fifty or a hundred bucks. Yeah, you can, you can, but it's not going to be as cool as this. It's not going to look as sleek. It's not going to support the same life, you know, you're not going to have the same reliability in the equipment and it's just not going to be the same. So I'd rather go with a small tank, make it really high end, really nice, than go with a bigger tank and have it be not as nice. The goal with this 10 gallon tank is to make it the coolest 10 gallon tank that you guys have ever seen. Maybe I'll succeed, maybe I won't, but I want to take you guys along with me on that journey. So what I did is I ordered from saltwateraquarium.com. I ordered the small sizes of the real reef rock. And as you can see, they're not, they're small, but they're not that small. I, I really want smaller. Breaking these up is gonna give me more artistic creativity. Uh, it's gonna give me more possibilities. So I'm gonna go and I'm probably gonna break up a couple of these outside. I've already broken up some of these. And as you can see, you know, I have these little kind of rubble pieces. And what I'm trying to do here is I want to make I want to make shapes that aren't just rock. I want to make shapes that are like just interesting, you know, like put this together here and put this together like that, you know, make just interesting, cool looking shapes and then glue them all together. You can see I've already started doing something like that here. And you know, you see this is interesting, you know, it's not just a rock. And I've got some coral creep epoxy putty that's cured on there. It's as you can see, it's 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 on there. It's it's pretty solid. Purple epoxy putty. That's what I'm using right now to glue these together. So I mean, that's the plan. The plan is to break up some of these rocks, make them into smaller pieces, then glue them back together in like an interesting fashion. And here is the epoxy that I'm using. So this is coral creep purple epoxy putty. And then, probably not going to get here today, but I always use Carib Sea, Fiji Pink, Arag Alive, Live Sand. Okay, probably won't get there today though. Everything I'm using in this video, I'm putting in the description below. Just so you guys can see, this channel is probably way too small at this point to have anything sponsored. So, this is just personally what I'm using. This is what I bought with my own money. And... It's just for your reference. So if you're curious about what you want to use for your tank, if you want to create a nano tank like this one, or if you're creating a bigger tank and you just want to make one that looks similar, just bigger. I always hate when you watch a video, a YouTube video of someone using something and you don't know what it is and they don't put the link in the description or they don't put what it is in the description below. That's not going to happen on this channel. Everything I use is going to be in the description. All right, Jordan. So enough rambling. Let's get to actually doing some aquascaping. And I'm going to take this guy downstairs. I'm going to take these two downstairs. You know what, I'm gonna take these three downstairs and break them up. Cause I mean, they're just, they're just way too big. They're, I can't create anything that's like with interest in such a small area with such big rocks. So we've got our rocks here. Now, if you've never aquascaped before or maybe you've done it poorly and you wanna do it better, I guess one of the lessons you can take away from this is don't be afraid to break up your rocks. Rocks like this are actually pretty easy to break apart. So, I mean, just go at it. If you make a mistake, you can always glue them back together. It's not that big a deal. So, I'm just gonna take a hammer and chisel. Boom, look at how easy that is. And now you've got a smaller piece that's easier to deal with. You don't always get what you want. You see how that didn't break any way. That did not break the way I wanted it to. So, but it's okay. 
I'm gonna take a smaller chisel. See if that helps. There, okay? So now we've got a bunch of rubble. And as you can see, this is made up of like that aragonite sand, right? I think, with whatever glue they use to hold it together, which is supposedly reef safe. But here's the thing. Okay, let's say I want a long piece. Look at that, now I have a long piece. Just glue those two together. I've shown the white on the inside, but that's totally fine because, I mean, eventually coralline or whatever, coral, that's gonna cover that. Let's go with the smaller chisel and see what happens. I liked that. See, maybe the smaller chisel is better than the bigger one. So let's take all this upstairs. Let's see what we have to work with. The next thing I'm gonna do, I've actually cut a piece, a couple pieces of cardboard. Okay, you can see this is just, this was the water box aquarium uh, box. And this piece right here is roughly, roughly, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it's roughly the size of the base of the aquarium. I'm gonna put that right here. And now I have a template for the base of the aquarium. Because I'm gonna be building this aquascape on the outside of the aquarium, not the inside. So what I'm probably gonna be doing is building this aquascape, it's probably gonna lean up against the back wall, which will actually be this back wall, but we're gonna be using the front of the aquarium for that. So I don't wanna scratch that front glass, so got another piece of cardboard and that's gonna go here. And I'm gonna put a piece of tape right here. But basically now I have like a little template. I can build my aquascape. As long as it doesn't go outside this, this bottom cardboard, we're good. I want to use this guy. The reason why I'm building this aquascape outside of the aquarium is it's, it's just way easier to do it that way. Then I'm going to let it cure with all the epoxy on it on the outside of the aquarium and then I'm going to move it into the aquarium. So I just, I find that that's a little bit easier. You can do it on the inside of the aquarium. I just think it's, you can get around it a lot better and, and do better things um, more easily. With bigger aquariums, you're gonna build it probably in the aquarium or you're gonna model it on the outside and then do the final product, like all the gluing and everything together on the inside. So the way I start is like, I just, I just start placing and seeing what looks good, you know? That looks okay, but I don't like how flat that is and how exposed that side is. So I kind of like, like this. Something like that, but it could be completely different by the time I get get done with everything. So sometimes you want to start with larger rocks for the base, and with bigger aquariums, you you probably want to leave enough space for your magnetic cleaner to get by it. With this aquarium, we're going to be using a nano cleaner, so I really don't need that much space. I can actually go, I can go within probably a half inch of the glass if I wanted to. Then you just start placing. So I like to play with it obviously before I glue it. So you just start. A lot of times these pieces will kind of fit in together in a way that looks cool and kind of supports itself. So that's a start. You know, I'm not 100% happy with it yet. You know, it's, it's, it just is, it is what it is. I'm going to keep playing with it, keep doing things until I like what I have, then maybe glue some together and then go from that. So I like this arch a lot. And the good thing about it is, you know, it's not even, it's only glued in one spot and it freestands. So once I find something that I like and I know I want to use, now I'll glue it all together and then we'll build off of that once all of this is cured. So let's go ahead and get to gluing. Okay, so that took a lot more epoxy putty than I thought it was gonna take because the rock just kept breaking on me. Like this piece down here, completely broke off, but it's no big deal. I got it to do what I wanted it to do, and now I'm just waiting for this epoxy to cure. So I'm gonna give it like 10, 15 minutes. Fully cures in 24 hours, but it's pretty good and hard after like 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then we're gonna glue on that top piece. Hopefully we won't use as much epoxy this time.
So there you have it guys. That is the base structure for the Aquascape. So I think I'm done with the base structure. I think it looks pretty good. Certainly not a pile of rocks. I think it looks pretty interesting. And I think it looks good from every angle. Which is what I'm going for. Because this is very much a tank that you're going to be seeing, you're going to be looking at from the sides, probably more so than you are from the front, just because of where it is. Now, I'm not done with this. I think I'm just just about ready to put this into the tank and then I can make the final touches. I can add maybe a ledge here and there, a couple pieces of rubble, maybe hide some of the epoxy. But overall, it looks pretty good and there is a lot of epoxy on this, but you're really not going to notice it after a little bit once you get some growth going. And having it be that purple color, it'll blend in even from the start. More so than if it were like white or gray. I think it looks pretty decent. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Boom. There you have it, guys. I think it looks good from every angle. And it looks really good from this angle, in my opinion. This is probably the angle you're going to be looking at it the most. Then probably the second most, like this way. And then probably the third most, when you're in the kitchen cooking. You're going to look at it like that. Which, I think this side could use a little bit of work. We can add some, add some rock. Because we are not completely done. Alright guys, so I just wanted to show you with no water, no livestock, no nothing in there under the aquarium lights. And as you can see, I mean, this scape looks awesome under this light. You can't even tell there's a color difference between the epoxy joints and the actual rock. It just, it looks good. I think once it's all set up, it's going to look even better. And keep in mind, I'm not even done with this scape yet. There's still some final touches that I want to put on it, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, typically, whenever I'm doing something that's like kind of a creative process, I like to do something and then I like to walk away and look at it again maybe tomorrow the next day. And when I look at it again, I'll be like, oh, you know what? I really could add that. And it's just like being able to walk away and come back is, is something that definitely helps that. Uh, that creative process. So I'm going to leave it for tonight. So that's going to be it for this video guys. In the next one what I'm going to do is make the finishing touches to this rockscape, get some sand in here, get some water in and maybe get the tank cycling. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like, leave a comment down below, tell me if you like the rockscape, tell me if you hate the rockscape and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So see you in the next one.